In today's video, how to be successful in the NPC and the IFBB Bikini Division. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about bikini, the bikini division, specifically around the NPC and the IFBB. I just had a wonderful weekend here in St. Petersburg with the first ever, first ever Pro Physique experience, and I had a couple of my competitors here and it just reminded me what we're working towards and so I want to give you a little bit of advice now why should you listen to me when it comes to competing in the bikini division well over the last few years I've really started to focus a lot on competitors that compete in the bikini division in fact I've had some competitors even win national titles pro titles and so this year will be my first year coaching a competitor at the level like the Arnold and the Olympia which I'm very excited about but she won't be my last. So what I'd like to talk about is where the bikini division was and where it's going. And the areas of discussion are gonna be based around muscularity, how much muscle should we have? Conditioning, how much conditioning should you be looking at? Stage presence, how should you be posing? What should you be doing to make sure your stage presence is fantastic? And finally, how often should you compete? What is a good amount of time for competitors to be on stage and off stage? And how should you schedule? Maybe we can talk a little bit about strategy for shows. So first, when we talk about muscle, years ago, the bikini division started off as a division for females as an entry level to competing, okay? The figure division was all that was available as an entry level, and it required a bit of muscle. The bikini division started off as girls had just really had a natural shape and a natural grace. And yes, they got into nice condition, but I don't think many people originally would have considered them muscular athletes. That is not the case anymore, my friends. The bikini division has really changed. I would even call it figure light. If you look at some of the top level bikini pros of our current kind of system, they resemble a lot of the figure pros from not that long ago, okay? So the bikini division is now much more about muscularity and shape. However, we're still not looking for striations and vascularity by no means. The muscle should be big enough that it can have great shape without having to get like a huge pump and you know have striations in it. So the real goal for the bikini competitor is to find the right amount of muscle that complements their natural shape. The word shape is something I'm gonna say a lot. That really seems to be what the judges are looking for now. They're looking for, when they look up on stage, what are the shapes that they're seeing. Linear competitors are going to struggle in the current environment. Having a V taper, okay, and having some glute shape is really what I see as an earmark for success on the stage. It also means that they've changed some of the discussion around posing, but we're talking about muscle. So years ago, I would have called the bikini division a butt and shoulder division. They wanted to see girls with nice round shoulders from the front. They wanted to see girls with nice round glutes from the back and really pretty and a nice taper. And that was basically what you got when you became a bikini champion. But that's really changed. The, the, the posing now, they're actually allowing girls to display their lat from the front. That gives you shape. More fullness in the shoulders, more detail in the glutes and the hamstrings, okay? So that in a front pose, you actually see a dip in the hip. So muscularity is not really a concern for most women. Why? Because very few women are gonna be too muscular for the bikini division. Even after years of training, there are those that will be on the higher end of the division, but I find that being more muscular is an advantage because it's a lot easier to pose down muscle, not pump up muscle, than it is to get on stage and time everything perfect just so you look good for those few seconds. So I encourage all my competitors to get on stage with as much muscle as possible. Now let's talk about conditioning, which I think for a few years, it got a little bit to the point where all they were, all that was rewarded was really extreme conditioning. But I don't think that's what the division was after. I don't think the judges wanted to see that. However, when you don't have a lot of muscle, there's a trick. Now I, as a natural bodybuilder, know this. When I diet down for shows, I know that if I am the most conditioned person at a show, I'll often look much more muscular than I am. That's an illusion. Well, I took this same approach to my competitors in the bikini division because at the time, when I first got into it, conditioning was something that you didn't see a lot. You would go to even to the bigger national shows and you would find that the conditioning of the competitors that were in the first call out was usually much, much better than the rest of the division. So 
I think conditioning went a little too far for a while there. There was a, there was a couple, maybe a year or two, where the competitors were coming in so lean that they were actually losing muscle fullness. And for a division like bikini, the shape is something that they really want to pay attention to. So while you can really get lean and show off and look more muscular than you are, you're often going to lose that muscle fullness and that shape that you have on stage. So what I really like to do now is, yes, we need to be conditioned. We need to see details in the core. We need to have clear separation between the, the hamstring and the glutes. But you don't want etches in the lines. You don't want deep separation. You want lean enough so that you can fill out and by fill out, I mean I like to walk the carbs up going into a show. I like to have water going up into a show because that allows muscle bellies to be full. This is just a personal preference. If muscle is 70 to 80% water and you're pulling all the water out of your body, well, you're really at a disadvantage to a girl who's eating into the show, eating more. So while conditioning is very important, we just wanna make sure we're conditioned enough so that we can fill out properly and not risk looking softer while we do that. The thing that in my mind really separates competitors from amateur to pro to even pro to top pro is stage presence. This is something that at the national level and even the local level, you don't really get a sense of it because we don't get a lot of time on stage. The girls are walking out on stage, maybe a few seconds of eye contact, hitting a front pose, a back pose, getting compared and walking off stage, okay? But do not underestimate the importance of this. The bikini division is just as much about the confidence and the poise that the competitor has, the eye contact, the plan that they have, so that when they walk out on stage, they look like they've done it a thousand times to the point where it looks like it's just natural. Stage presence accounts for so much. So not only stage presence in regards to just hitting your poses correctly, which like I said, one of my favorite things now that has become big in the bikini division is that you're going to display a lat to give yourself some shape in a front pose. You're also from the back, no longer going to be pinching and hiding your shoulders. You want to show the X frame wide, narrow, wide. Okay. And you do not want to lean forward in your back poses. If you lean too far forward in your back poses, a judge that's looking up you only is going to see your glutes and it's not going to have balance. So the two keys for posing and stage presence really are shape and balance. These are the key words that keep getting thrown around. Some girls are going to have a little bit more muscle than others. Some girls are going to have a little bit better shape than others. But if you can find that balance between muscularity, shape, and balance, you're really going to be successful. And a lot of that comes down to taking your time in between shows. So that leads us into how often should you compete? Well, the first rule of competing is you have to get on stage to see where you fit into the sport. The wonderful thing I love about the NPC is that there are so many tiers to this system. You are looking at a division where you can compete at true first timers for your first time you ever compete. You can do novice. You can do open. Once you've done open, you could fight to win an overall. Once you won an overall, maybe you should go to the national level. Once you go to the national level, maybe you should try to fight to get in that first call out, get a pro card, okay? Once you fight to get in that first call out or get a pro card, you go to the pro division. Now you're at a whole new level and you're fighting to get a first call out as a pro. You're working on getting to the Olympia, okay? And once you get to the Olympia, well, you're just gonna fight to win that Olympia title. So you heard me there. There are so many tiers to the NPC and the IFBB that it's a great way for women to really set themselves up for success because we're going to get into competition mode, we're gonna get lean, we're gonna look great, we're gonna find out where we fit, and we're gonna set our next goal. And that's really de gonna determine how long you should take off between shows. I like my competitors to, to schedule two to three shows within a four to six week window, um, and then we can determine what we need to do. Do we need to take six months off? Do we need to take a year off? Do we need to take two years off before we get back on stage? If you're someone that's winning overalls but not doing well at the national level, then it might be time for you to really take some time off. We do not get better in contest prep, at least not the way I do it. The way I prep, without drugs and without the use of like harsh starvation diets, we are going to spend time getting lean enough, but we need to take time in between shows to put on muscle the right way. Now, another thing that I wanna talk about just quickly is kind of politics. And this is something that I used to hear a lot about when I first started coaching competitors. But what I found is the term politics gets thrown around by people that perhaps aren't that involved in the sport and they maybe don't understand why their clients or their friends aren't doing well enough. I promise you, if you look at the results of the competitions over the last few years, politics are gone. 
They are judging the product on stage at every single show, okay? I've seen that more so in the last two years than I ever saw. If you look at last year's Olympia, most of the winners were first time winners at the highest level show of the year. Last year at the Arnold, the defending champion lost at the Olympia. So they flip flop them. So they are paying attention to who is on on the day of the competition, not who has a name. This is why I think politics are really things that you really can't worry about. You can't discuss them. Do, do they exist? Perhaps. But I find if you are good enough and you keep showing up, you are going to get what you deserve. But if you start shouting politics, it's just going to get in your heart and in your mind, and you're gonna miss out on a great opportunity to enjoy the sport, to get better at the sport. Finally, let's talk a little bit about the topic of drug use, which I see a lot of it. Yes, I have the opportunity to work with some amazing athletes who've worked with a lot of coaches, so I get to see these drug protocols that they've been on. Now, I as a coach do not provide drug protocols. I don't think they're necessary to be successful in the highest levels of the IFBB, but I don't actually have a problem with them if they are being taken with the understanding of the athlete. My real problem lies when coaches don't understand the goals of the athlete, not only to get on stage, but for the rest of their life. You don't want to damage yourself as a competitor and make decisions for yourself at 20 years old that you would make differently at 30 year olds because a coach is pushing things on you. I want every one of you that are interested in being very competitive to think about if someone is going to put you on a drug protocol, are they doing it because it's your goal or are they doing it because it just glorifies that coach and all they care about is the short term praise they get for their competitors looking good. Okay, this sport is something that you and I can do forever. I have been competing for 12 years. My last time was in 2018 and I'm going to compete again. I like to take time off between the shows. I like to encourage my competitors to take time off between competitions, okay? We need to spend time building and growing. Putting on muscle and, and, and improving our lives is what this sport is about. So I would just encourage you guys not to make short-term decisions that are gonna affect you negatively in the long term. All right guys, that's gonna be it for me today. I hope you guys are having an awesome day and I'll talk to you tomorrow.